Hey guys, it's Liana and I'm here today to talk about my type. This video idea, I don't even know if it is a video idea, but I decided to do it anyway. Just because I noticed with myself um, a recurring trend in the types of characters that I that I gravitate towards. This list will include um, some television characters, is it just, and movie, well film, or on screen characters. I'll do book characters first um, and the majority, not by a lot, it's like 60-40 <laughs> is book characters. It's just, yeah, I, I, I noticed two that were the same and then I was like, oh, and also kind of this one, also kind of this one, kind of that too, him too. Oh, yep, him also. These characters are ones that like, they are, you know, some of my favorite characters. They are the ones that I, I gravitate towards them because I find them the most interesting the most compelling and also I tend to identify with them most to you know take from that what you will be forewarned should you ever wish to be my friend in real life <laughs> these are the people that I feel a connection with also yeah like what, why would you care about this video well one I guess like if you give a shit about what I think um, which is generally kind of why I think you're watching my channel is because for whatever reason you give a shit what I think I can't claim to understand why. So there's that. And then two, if the characters on this list are also favorites of yours, then it's very possible that I will be also naming some characters that you haven't read the book or seen the show or seen the movie. And if you like me, you're like, well, 70% of that list I have seen or read and really, really liked, then odds are the remaining 30%, did I say 70? May also be up your alley. So it's kind of like, a read likes <laughs> but for books, film, and television based on my personal favorite type of character. So basically, like I'm saying, if you also like what I like, then there might be some stuff on this list that you might want to give a go. The sort of like unifying five characteristics that I feel is applicable to basically all of these characters um, is that they are grumpy, emotionally stunted, self-destructive, <laughs> sarcastic, and mildly sociopathic. So yeah, I have, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 10 characters. I genuinely, sincerely did not plan. <laughs> I didn't keep listing characters until I had 10. I just have 10. Yay, I guess. So uh, they're not ranked, um, but I did split the list into book characters and then film and television characters. So like, if you only want to hear about book characters, I did them all first. Since this is a booktube channel, book characters get priority. So first on the list, um, because it's the first one that I wrote down, um, and also because it's like, the first two characters basically are what started this whole project that made me think this was a video idea at all. So I figure I'll talk about them first since they're the ones that started this whole thing. And that is Kaz Brecker. I mentioned in my Grisha like recap review gush fest, by which I mean Shadow and Bone, and did that because people were like, where's your shadow and bone video? And I was like, oh, I didn't know I was required to make one. Anyway, I mentioned that video. I think I mentioned it a few times that my car's license plate is customized to reference Kaz Brecker. Nobody can call me a fake fan. This is not a recent development. I've had that license plate since I've had the car. I mean, I guess you don't know how long I've had my car. For all you know, I got the car yesterday. But basically what I'm saying is like, this has been a thing with me for ever since I read Six of Crows. <laughs> I love the shit out of Kaz Brecker. People can say what they want to say about that book and about that character. And I take it personally. Um, yeah, so Kaz Brecker, if you're unfamiliar, is, I would say, I mean, Six of Crows is a cast of characters, but he is arguably the main character. It is an ensemble cast, but if you had to like, if you had to say one of them is the main character, it's Kaz Brecker. He is the leader, well, in practice, the leader of the dregs. Technically, Boomer is in charge of the dregs, but in really a name only, Kaz has taken over because he's, you know, he's good at it. So he's basically de facto in charge of the dregs at the ripe old age of well, 17 or whatever. And he's physically crippled, emotionally crippled, <laughs> is suffering from PTSD and kind of takes that out on other people. But he also definitely hides behind uh, lots of aggression and sarcasm. He's clever, that's why he's in charge of the Drakes, because uh, he's good at being a criminal. He's good at manipulating people. He is good at putting together clever schemes. He's good at playing the market. He's good at 
recognizing people's talents and taking advantage of them. Yeah, he's not dumb. <laughs> Say what you will about Cass Brecker, he's not dumb, but he is very self-destructive. Um, he's not as sarcastic as some of the other characters. Uh, it's kind of more of like a vibe. Like you get the sense that like his face is sarcastic. I don't know if that makes sense. I think it makes sense. You just feel like his neutral state is one of judgment. <laughs> and yeah, the way that he uses people is is borderline sociopathic. Of course, when you get his internal monologue, like he does feel stuff sometimes. <laughs> he's, he's kind of been through some shit. Oh, um, and yeah, for, for the most part, he uses cleverness and aggression as armor to protect himself and his moist center. I don't like that phrasing, but that's what I said. So yeah, Kaz motherfucking Brecker. Dirty hands. Bastard of the barrel. So then, yeah, the, the character that I immediately was like, oh, I'm sensing a pattern here is Sandan Glockta. Sandan Glockta, basically everything that I just said about Kaz Brecker, minus the being 17 and the being in charge of a gang, could apply to Sandan Glockta. Uh, Sandan Glockta is a torturer for His Majesty's Inquisition in the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Did I even say Lee Bardugo's name when I described Kaz? I don't really have a plan for how I'm explaining these characters, so just, we'll just go with it. Anyway, if you've read the First Law Trilogy, then you absolutely know who Sandan Glockta is. And if you haven't read the First Law Trilogy, but you've like considered it, most likely you've considered it because you've heard reviews and those reviews have almost undoubtedly mentioned Sandan Glockta. <laughs> Glockta is very sarcastic, but more so he's sarcastic in his thoughts than out loud. He is a bit sarcastic out loud. He is also physically crippled and emotionally stunted and somewhat self-destructive and quite sociopathic. He's a torturer for the Inquisition and he's definitely grumpy. <laughs> so Casbrecker and Sandan Glockta are very similar in vibe and tone. And I don't think they'd get along because they're too similar and they try to out scheme each other. Um, and obviously like if we're one-upping each other in who's got it worse, Glockta has it worse. Kaz has a limp, which like, yeah, like that's rough. Um, but there's no part of Glockta that isn't broken. <laughs> He wishes he only had a limp. <laughs> Basically, Abercrombie was like, I'll take your cast breaker and I'll raise you a Sandan Glockta. <laughs> so, yeah. I adore Sandan Glockta. As I've said many, many times in many, many videos, possibly my favorite character in all of fiction. However, he is not the one on my license plate. It is Cass Brecker. I, I don't know why. It's hard to say. If you, It depends on the day you ask me. If you ask me tomorrow if I like Cass Brecker or, Bla or Glockta better, I might say Cavs. I don't know. It's tough. They're, these two are definitely tops on this list. Like, this list isn't ranked, but they are tops on my list. <laughs> Next, I have one that, like, I didn't really... Okay, like, m tiny story time. Um, I've met Pierce Brown th th three times? Three times. Because so I went to the Howler Fest for the release of Iron Gold. I went to the signing similar to Howler Fest for Dark Age. And then I went to a small kind of like last minute impromptu signing for the Second Sons of Aries graphic novel at my local Barnes and Noble that was like, because I live in LA and he lives in LA and was like two days before it happened was like, I'm gonna do a signing if anyone wants to come. So it was probably my favorite of the signings because it was a quite intimate event because hardly anyone knew about it and no one was like flying in for it. And like, it was just like on a weeknight at Barnes and Noble. So whoever like is able to get there and lives here and knows about it showed up. So we were like in the front row and it was quite nice. Anyway, all that to say, every single time I've met Pierce Brown, he's asked this question, which makes me think this is just like a thing he asks everybody. And I think that I've heard him ask my friends out as well who've been with me at these signings. He asks who your favorite character is in the Red Rising books. And I never had an answer for him any of those times. And then since then, I've like thought to myself that like when the sixth and final Red Rising book comes out someday and we have the inevitable signing that I will go to because I will, unless I'm dead, and he will ask me who my favorite character is. Well, this will be the time that he doesn't ask. But I have an answer now. <laughs> Finally have an answer. And uh, it's Ephraim T. Horn from the new books, the Iron Gold and Dark Age. Ephraim, you guessed it, is grumpy, emotionally stunted, self-destructive, <laughs> sarcastic, mildly sociopathic. <laughs> He's not crippled physically. Like not, he, yeah, not, that's not really a thing with him. But all the other stuff is definitely a thing with him. He's 
do I, I got, do I need to explain that? Um, I, it's not spoilery for the Red Rising trilogy. He, he's one of the POV characters in it because the new books have multiple POVs. It's not all from Darrow's perspective. If you know anything about the Red Rising universe, then you know from his name that he is neither a gold nor a red. He is a character that is mentioned in the original trilogy. Um, but so yeah, he becomes a, a POV character in the new books and he is a criminal. <laughs> and he's quite good at it and his part of the story has got a kind of heisty element to it so he's got some Kaz vibes he's had to deal with some really shady characters and he kind of wheels and deals and has to outthink them so he's got some Galacta vibes he's immensely sarcastic which like I found very amusing and refreshing after being in Darrow's head for six or for three books because fucking shut up out there after being in Darrow's head for three books, you know, it was kind of refreshing to have the sort of loose morals, wheel and deal and sociopathic sarcastic Ephraim. So he's, he's definitely at least, a, like, as far as the new books go, my favorite. And I mean, that's kind of what the Red Rising books, they were missing that element. So I'm so glad to see Ephraim in the new books. So yeah, if you've been putting off reading the new books in the Red Rising trilogy, I mean, I personally think they're Pierce Brown's best work to date but also Ephraim. <laughs> Next, I've got Locke Lamora from The Gentleman Bastards. It's been a minute since I talked about the series. There was a, an era of my channel where nearly every video included a mention of The Gentleman Bastards or Locke Lamora specifically. So he's due. It's his turn again. If you've never read The Gentleman Bastards, it is a book series that is, or that at least that first book is often compared to Six of Crows, which I have repeatedly said I take issue with because while I enjoy both books immensely, and while both Kaz Brecker and Locke Lamar are on this list, so you'd say like, oh, obviously you see parallels. I mean, yeah, there's some parallels, but I really, really, really don't think that if you like the one, you're guaranteed to like the other because they're very different in tone. So that's an aside, just, just saying. Locke Lamora himself is kind of grumpy, kind of emotionally stunted, definitely self-destructive, <laughs> very sarcastic, less sociopathic. He's less sociopathic than these others. Or is he? I've read Republic of Thieves, and if you have not, <laughs> I recommend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Locke is the leader of the Dillman Bastards, or he becomes the leader of the Dillman Bastards. In that sense, he's a bit like Cass Brinker, kind of like grows up on the streets, is the has to like learn street smarts, learn to be a thief. And for the Gentleman Bastards, he's kind of the brains of the operation. Similarly to how Kaz Brecker isn't the sharpshooter or the acrobat or the explosives expert. He's like the brains of the operation. Similarly, Locke Lamora is the brains of the operation. And he is honestly on the list of characteristics that are supposed to unify all these characters. I mean, he's mostly self-destructive and sarcastic. His friends have to kind of save him from himself a lot and he rewards them with sarcasm. <laughs> Which, like, there is, like, one of the best romances of all time in that series, which is quite, if you love them and you're into that, then I recommend it, because it's heart I, heartwarming. I don't know, it makes it sound like it's, like, sweet and fluffy, which it's not, but it's it's great. But yeah, Locke is, Locke is a little shit. That's another thing that I guess, I, I guess I could have, instead of listing five characteristics, I could have just said all these characters are kind of, like, a little shit. Yeah, so Locke is also on the list for aforementioned reasons. <laughs> Next up, I have Ronan Lynch from The Raven Cycle. Ronan Lynch is grumpy, emotionally stunted, very self-destructive, incredibly sarcastic, and definitely sociopathic. <laughs> if you've never read The Raven Cycle, it follows uh, three boys and one girl. Um, the boys all go to the same school, Agley and Bee Academy. Academy? Yes. Well, anyway, the, the school is called Agley and B. And it's like a prep school, like super fancy. And then Blue, Sergeant, she goes to public school and her aunt, she lives with her aunts who are all psychics. And the boys are on this quest to find where this ancient Welsh king is supposedly buried over here in, uh, in Virginia. And so they're using like ley lines and whatever and a lot of magical stuff gets involved. And Ronan Lynch is basically just there to be, I mean, that's untrue and I don't want to spoil things, but it feels like he's there to be grumpy and sarcastic. Because <laughs> that there's kind of this like, you know, this like youthful idealism, particularly uh, when it comes to Gainsey, who's kind of like the one who's most into this whole finding the Welsh king business. 
and everyone's kind of gone with it for him. He's the Harry Potter of the story. Ronan is like Draco Malfoy if Harry and Draco were actually friends. Um, Ronan is like, you kind of like want to ask him like, whose side are you on, buddy? What's your problem? I mean, you don't know, you do learn what his problem is and that doesn't, like I've often said about books and characters, like learning about someone's tragic backstory can explain things, but it never justifies them. So there are reasons for why Ronan is the way that he is. Does it justify how badly he treats his friends? No. Do I love it? Yes. <laughs> what does that say about me? You decide. Arguably, Ronan Lynch is the cruelest of these characters. And I, and Glockta is on this list, who is an actual torturer. Uh, but Ronan is Ronan. <laughs> he is not nice. <laughs> No one would ever accuse Ronan of being like, she has a pet crow, raven, raven, crow, what's the difference? Do I know? I don't know. Named Chainsaw, which like also Cass Brecker and Ronan Lynch with this like crow motif and them being generally like grumpy assholes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I have a type. <laughs> Next up is Victor Vale from Vicious, who is a proper sociopath. Like the others, I think, display some sociopathic tendencies or at least like kind of emulate a sociopathic approach to things. Perhaps like they have suppressed their feelings in favor of a sociopathic strategy. But Victor Vale is a proper sociopath <laughs> and I love him. If you've never read Vicious, I didn't like it the first time I read it, but that was mainly because I had a misunderstanding of what the book was before I went into it. And so then was not expecting or prepared for what it actually was and was disappointed because I wasn't getting what I expected and wanted. But then I reread it and was like, actually, I mean, now that I know what this is uh, and I'm going into it not expecting something else and I could just enjoy it for itself, I actually really love the shit out of it. So Victor Vale is uh, in, in the vicious book, books series. There are basically something like mutants. They're called EOs, extraordinaries. And Victor Vale is able to control pain and... <laughs> Like, is there anything like more like sadistic than that? Uh, he's able to turn it off and also to turn it on and turn it up. So he's kind of like, his kind of superpower is like just being able to turn the dial up and down on pain for himself and others. For himself? I think for himself. Pretty sure for himself. It's been a while. But you know, he's got an arch nemesis and he is very sociopathic about using people to get at his nemesis. And there's kind of an adorable relationship between him and his friends. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, not, a, not a nice person. <laughs> definitely a schemer, definitely quite clever, definitely good at outthinking his enemies, good at manipulating people, good at using pain to get what he wants. <laughs> Clockta. So yeah. Victor Vale. So that does it for book characters. The next four are our screen on screen characters, film and television. It's actually all television except for one. Once again, these are not ranked. There's the order that I wrote them down. This is the part where you click off the video because I'm going to open with Jughead Jones from Riverdale. <laughs> I unironically watch Riverdale. Laziness prohibits this from ever being a reality, but I have actively considered filming an extensive video essay explaining once and for all why Riverdale is a fantastic show. Again, I'm too lazy for that ever to actually happen, but I've thought about it and I, th I want credit for thinking about it. Jughead Jones <laughs> is uh, arguably the protagonist of Riverdale. I mean, Archie, the red-haired kid, is kind of like the one on the posters. Nearly every episode is narrated by Jughead Jones, so that kind of makes me feel like he's the main character. Also, he's the character that I care the most about. <laughs> he is your sort of like stereotypical misanthropic aspiring writer. He's like from the wrong side of the tracks. His dad was a gang leader. He is kind of homeless for part of the show, not for the whole of the show. He's always writing. He's always quoting literature and making references to classic film. He is quite grumpy, a bit emotionally stunted due to his wrong side of the tracks background. He's kind of self-destructive. He's definitely sarcastic, not really sociopathic. That one I can't really say Jughead is. Of all of the characters on my list, he's probably the nicest because he is, you know, 17 years old and just kind of like trying his best. But I mean, he does end up joining 
the gang that his father was a part of, and he does quite criminal things, and he, he does some very questionable things, <laughs> which a lot of it is, you know, like, oh, you know, he's in, between a rock and a hard place, which he is. So again, he definitely fits the mold, fits the type. And until Freddie Carter was cast as Cass Brecker, I kept telling anyone that would listen that I wanted Cole Sprouse to play Cass Brecker. Until we had a Cass Brecker, I was basically picturing Cole Sprouse when I was picturing Cass Brecker. Next I have Deadpool, or Wade Wilson, from Deadpool. Deadpool is just about the only superhero movie that I like, or movies. I like both the first and the second Deadpool movies. I don't really like superhero movies very much. I like Thor, mainly because it's like Viking adjacent and Chris Hemsworth. But like, I'm not super into superheroes. Like, it's not like I hate it, but I don't really go out of my way to see superhero movies. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've definitely enjoyed Like, I liked Captain America. I liked the Thor first and third movies. Second one is weird. I like the Batman movies. I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of the Marvel movies, but usually only once. And I still haven't seen, what is it, End Endgame? Is that the newest one? Well, whichever one was the one where, like, Thanos was killing everyone. Still haven't seen that. But I basically know what happens because I don't really care. All that to say, Deadpool is more my speed. Because Deadpool is like, you know, if a Kaz Brecker, a Sandan Glockta, a Ronan Lynch was a superhero. He even says, like, out loud, overtly, I am not a hero. He is definitely, I don't, is he even an, an anti-hero? I don't know. I don't think he is. He's not any kind of hero. He's just out for himself. He has his own personal agenda. He's more like Victor Vale. If Victor Vale, you know, was like jacked and like doing physical stunts and whatever. He just has his own personal vendettas, personal agenda, personal wishes and desires. The mutants are trying to recruit him and he's like, fuck that. He's very grumpy, emotionally stunted, self-destructive, sarcastic, and arguably sociopathic. To be a true sociopath, like obviously he doesn't, dis he doesn't display behavior that would be, to, that would make him qualify as a true sociopath. But again, sociopathic tendencies. Yeah. I don't think I need to explain why Deadpool's on this list. Deadpool's on the list because Deadpool fits the type. <laughs> Two to go. Uh, second to last, I have Ivar the Boneless from the Viking series. I don't need to, like, no one is shocked that I love the Vikings show. And obviously, like, I love the shit out of Lagertha. I mean, Lagertha is, to quote Jon Snow, McQueen. But Ivar the Boneless <laughs> It's the one that I'm probably the most entertained by, slash the one that I like feel kinship with. He is crippled, like Sandan Galacta and Kaz Brecker. He is very grumpy, emotionally stunted, self-destructive, sarcastic, and, and sociopathic. If you don't know who Ivar the Boneless is, um, he doesn't come into the show until quite a bit into it because he's one of the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok. When the show starts, you start out with Ragnar and Lagertha and their two young children. But as the show goes on, he ends up, Ragnar ends up having children with other women, woman specifically. And then again, like a lot of years go by over the course of the show. So in later seasons, his sons are now adults in their own right. And one of his sons is Ivar and he's called Ivar the Boneless because he's crippled. He can't use his legs at all. So later he kind of like gets some equipment to like help him move around more easily. But for the beginning, at least, he just drags himself around on the floor like a snake. <laughs> Which, like, sidebar, the actor who plays him is is doing that. Like, he's physically dragging himself across the floor in all those scenes. Um, which, you know, is impressive. But in any case, uh, yeah, Ivar has to outthink people. Like, it's kind of similar to Kaz and Glockta, where they aren't physically strong. Actually, La Clamora also. Victor Vale, also. Ephraim, also. <laughs> he's not physically strong or even just averagely able-bodied, but he is really intelligent and really clever. And he's a bit of a trickster. He's got that low-key energy. So he outthinks his brothers and his enemies all the time. And he has some pretty sadistic battle strategies, which are successful. He's an incredible tactician because he can outthink people and he can do, he'll contemplate doing things that other people wouldn't because it's barbaric, but it, it works. <laughs> and he is, Definitely has that kind of like chaos energy of like laughing at the sight of gore. But he's got, you know, that soft gooey center of like emotional trauma because he was crippled and 
abused because he was crippled and he's got a lot of like hang-ups about being crippled so he's pr arguably one of the most interesting characters like one of, uh, on vikings that has the most depth and layers nuance and complexity and the guy that plays him does an amazing job so uh this is me saying if you haven't watched vikings go watch vikings <laughs> if for no other reason than for i wear the boneless <laughs> and last but certainly not least it's tommy shelby from peaky blinders while i was saying that cole sprouse was kind of who i was picturing for uh kaz brecker all the gifts i would use for kaz brecker was until we had an actual kaz brecker were tommy shelby because he was basically like kaz brecker in 20 years in birmingham <laughs> that's what i thought that's how i describe peaky blinders too it's like if the crows if the dregs were like 20 years older and living in Birmingham instead of Ketterdam and there's obviously no magic. The Peaky Blinders are a gang and Tommy is the head of that gang. He is not the eldest of the sons so he shouldn't be in charge but he's the smartest. He's the schemiest. He is the most clever. He's a lot like Kaz in that way or like Locke in that way. He's like Glasha in that way. He can outthink his enemies. He even tells his older brother that he does all the thinking so that Arthur doesn't have to. And he's also quite self-destructive. He is frequently sarcastic, definitely but emotionally stunted. He's also suffering like PTSD from World War One, and uh, you know, absolute delight to people like me who feel such kinship with such characters. So yeah, I don't know if this video was helpful or interesting or in any way beneficial to you who has now watched it, but I hope it was. And I hope that if nothing else, maybe you've seen and read all of these things. In which case, that's why you're watching my channel because you're my people. Or you've only re read or seen some of these and maybe I've encouraged you to read or see some of the others. Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments down below. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.